Hey folks, it's uh, SW here again. Um, here talking about some features that should be added to the game NBA Playgrounds. Uh, so, I mean, if you probably played NBA Playgrounds and um, it's probably at its all time low point right now. Uh, all the, the time the game's been out, one of the there's a lot of features people didn't want to see and um, they haven't come out and people have been really frustrated online portion of the game is dead now so uh, I'm just here to bring some sort of ideas that could help restore the game to and help the game reach its full potential because this game when it came out it was a work in progress but definitely could could have been a lot better um, so the first thing I'm going to talk about in this video, um, first feature is, I think that should be added, is dedicated f servers. Game Online has been, um, right now non-existent, but in the past, so much lag in the game, and, um, right now the only way to find a game is, you know, using, like, Discord or Steam, trying to find somebody. I think dedicated servers would help reduce the lag and um you know I think you could also see how many people are playing at that particular time you could you know choose who you want to play things like that as opposed to the elo system because no one wants to wait five ten minutes to play a match just because um you know there should be another option second thing they should add is the practice mode um I feel like this is definitely necessary and, you know I think a lot of basketball games now you know they come with that sort of freestyle mode where you could shoot around without being interrupted by C you know the computer character you know um they know it all you allow you to hopefully they could add something where you can know the signature moves of each legend because like right now you just it's just guesswork I mean some of the eleven the legends you know it's obvious who you know what that signature is going to be, but some of them, like James Harden, you would never have shot the ball like that. But um, I think that is definitely a good feature they should add. Third thing is a sort of game guide, because the game you don't you know it doesn't really have its built-in manual that you know gives sort of the details and concepts of the game, like lottery picks. Like they don't go into depth of all the possible lottery picks you can get. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, fourth thing I would add is um, online co-op. Now this is definitely the most requested feature to be added in NBA Playgrounds and uh, for good reason because people want to play with their friends and you know online co-op you have the potential to have four people playing the game as opposed to just two two people playing a game um, outside of local multiplayer um, but I think it's the second most necessary feature um, but yeah that's definitely something that they should add um, the last thing though most important is they need to restore active communication and what I mean by this is developers communicating, you know, with the community itself or having a sort of moderator as like a middle person delivering information. Um, and I say this because the problem that has occurred of late is that the dev developers, they're a lot more distant when the game first out, when the game first came out, you know, those like always defending their game. Because a lot of people, so people, you know, bash the game, complain about the game, and they sort of defended it. Now, they don't really do that unless there's money. I mean, on Steam, it's the first time the developers started talking again was when, you know, they figured out that the player unlock is not working because, you know, that's money. If it's not working, people are going to be complaining. They're going to lose money. Same thing with uh, some gentleman. His game wasn't working. So they looked into that because you know they don't want they don't want to lose that money. So they're they they've basically created a new persona. Now it's less about 
caring for their customers more about that trying to get money and that's a horrible path for them to go down to so I think in the end communication is the key because if they don't want to do co-op that's fine as long as they communicate with the community if by not outright saying they will or will not be co-op they're opening themselves to criticism if they go and say hey you know we don't think co-op's gonna happen something that's gonna be difficult for us to implement don't expect it to come people will say oh you know what like that sucks but at least they they went on and said it instead of having us be misled you know um, so those are my idea you know those are some sort of ideas that have been floating around I think that should be added um, the last thing though is I'm gonna sort of crush sort of two things that people want first thing is MJ and Kobe I always see these threats people will come you know like, where's Kobe where's MJ those guys will never be in the game that's just it's just a branding issue they don't they're not gonna get their rights it's simple they're not gonna ever be in the game sorry move on uh, next thing is uh, cross-platform this all started I think mainly because of Street Fighter 5 because they had PC and PS4 and people were like oh why don't you guys do the same thing why don't you have crossplay this doesn't happen unless you just have those two platforms because um, you know these consoles they don't want to work together sharing the information as a security security concern they don't you know I think Tekken 7 they um, explained why they can't have co-op the only way they would ever have co-op is if it's exclusively two platforms and Saber they're you know they're a good business company somewhat so they're not gonna say, oh, only these two consoles are gonna have crossplay. No, if they're gonna do crossplay, it's gonna be for everybody, and it's not possible. So it's not gonna be in the game. All right. 